Welcome, spiritual family, to AFG Ministry, a faithful God ministry. I am Alicia, pastor and founder here, and I am extremely excited that you are here with me today. This is indeed a blessing. Like our welcome video said, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, I know that God will meet you here today. Amen? I'm excited about our spiritual tea today. I'm going to spill all the spiritual tea about understanding our provisions. I want to start with the prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to bless the church in this place. Here may the weary find rest and the strong be renewed. Here may the doubting find faith and the content be awakened. Here may the tempted find help and the sorrowful find comfort. Here may the believer be encouraged and the lost find salvation. Forgive our sins and cleanse our hearts. Inhabit our praises as we worship. And speak to us through your word. All in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before I begin, let's take a moment to reflect on our past week and give God praise and worship. Because no matter how hard the test was, we made it. Some of you experienced the toughest week, but if you take a moment to reflect somewhere along your path, God did carry you. Remember, test turns into testimony and the mess in your hot mess turns into a message. Amen, yes. The title of my talk today is Decisions Equals Provisions. <laughs> and I'll be referring to Luke chapter 9 verses 10 through 17. So let's put this all in our wide spiritual lens. One day, George W. Bush, he was in a, he was in an airport lobby and he noticed a man in a long flowing white robe with a long white beard and flowing white hair. And the man had a staff in one hand and stone tablets in the other. So George W. decided to approach the man. And he asked the man, aren't you Moses? The man ignored George W. And he stared at the ceiling. He just ignored him, staring at the ceiling. And so George W. positioned himself more directly in the man's view. And he asked again, excuse me, aren't you Moses? The man continued to stare at the ceiling, ignoring George W. So George W tugged at the man's sleeve. And he asked once again, aren't you Moses? The man finally responded in an irritated voice. And he turned to George W and he says, yes, I am. George W then asked the man, he asked him, then why do you seem so irritated? And the man replied, the last time I spoke to a bush, I had to spend 40 years in the desert. I read an article recently about subscription-based meal delivery kit services. And I read that a fifth of adults receive meal, meal kit delivery services and in which 90% of subscribers refer the program to their friends, for their friends to, to subscribe as well. So meal subscription delivery kits basically, for example, is, is like the Blue Apron and the Home Chef. And for example, my family and I, we subscribe to, to do to, two different ones. We subscribe to Blue Apron and Home Chef. And I decided to, last year, I decided to give Blue Apron a try originally because I figured during my recovery process, this will simplify the cooking solution for dinner for my family. Um, it was something easy that my husband can do or the kids can do without any type of headaches. So 
so for those who that needs more data of understanding what subscription meal delivery kits are it's basically a consumer a consumer goes and they sign up and they subscribe to to the meal kit delivery service for example blue apron and they pick out the meals you pick out the meals for the week according to the size of your family two people four people and you pick out different meals they have different meals with different proteins different vegetables just different recipes and you pick out how many meals you want in that week and then bravo the meal kit delivery is delivered to your door and inside the meal kit delivery box is all of your fresh produce all of your fresh pro protein all of the ingredients that you need down to the right measurements you don't even need a measuring spoon or a measuring cup well sometimes you do just to measure water i mean because how can they ship you water right but i mean they can ship you water but i'm thinking they're thinking that you're able to get water anyhow but everything is there along with the recipe card for the for the meal for the recipe as well as visual instructions so everything is there right to your door you don't have to go to the store for anything everything seasonings everything is delivered to you right so for my house at one point to be honest for my house at one point we were actually receiving two different delivery meal services within the same week we, we got it we got a tad bit ridiculous with it but now we got a little bit more under control so we plan out our meals from the two delivery kits we switch off and on for you know for for a month's time and by me doing that each week when we receive our delivery kit our delivery box our service i feel a sense of relief and excitement right i i am relieved that i do not have to one worry about going to the store and then coming home to to cook a complete meal so i'm relieved about that every single week when we receive our meal delivery kit service and then i'm excited i'm excited because since we plan our meals a month in advance or weeks in advance i'm excited because i tend to forget what meals we have we have we have picked out and when they come I'm excited because I know there's gonna be really good meals and I'm, I'm anticipating what's to come and it's really good meals it's really good meals it's really good meals so the meal delivery kits the meal delivery kits are solutions to problems they're solutions to problems for example the problem that we are pressed on time that's a problem correct that's a problem time is the problem and the meal delivery kits are the solution because meal delivery kits save time correct or another problem possible problem another possible problem of my eating habits are not as healthy as I want them to be right that can be a problem and the meal delivery kits they provide fresh ingredients they provide a solution to that problem because they provide fresh ingredients for for healthy recipes that's the solution to the problem and see I began to think about it and I compared the meal delivery kit services to God's provisions to God's provisions in our lives see one of the definitions for provision is supply with food or drink or equipment especially on a journey that's one of the definitions of provisions and see god god provides what we need right to our door right to the door of our hearts am i correct yes i am correct but he provides it right to the door of, to the door of our hearts he provides what we need the provisions and sometimes double to equip and sustain us for our journey see I would imagine the feeling of expectations the feeling of expectations for his provisions the expectation of relief knowing that he will provide and when and he and he will provide perfect spiritual protein and nourishment 
to feed not just my spiritual well-being. He's not providing just for my, not for my spiritual well-being, but for my family as well. See, unlike Blue Apron and Home Chef, unlike that, my cost, my expense for God's provisions is only faithfulness. That's my only cost and expense. And that's not even an expense. That's not even a liability. That's an asset. To have faithfulness for God is an asset. And that's the only thing that I need to pay is my faithfulness. Right? See, by having faith, by having faith, God blesses my whole family. He blesses my whole family and me with his provisions and his promises. He supplies us with, with what we need and when we receive it, it's exciting because it's good spiritual nourishment and good spiritual food. Am I right? I am. Thank you. So, let's pause for a moment. Let's pause for a moment. And let's talk about, let's talk about the miracle of Jesus feeding 5,000 people. Let's talk about miracles. Let's pause and talk about a miracle of Jesus feeding 5,000 people. See, because this is the only, the only miracle that is recorded in all four Gospels. The only miracle that's recorded in all four Gospels. So, the story goes like this. Jesus and the disciples were sitting on a mountainside. And they're just sitting there and they're just calm. And I would imagine that they're just taking in just the view of a whole mountainside, right? Just how beautiful it is. And you're just, they're just taking it in. It's just like, right? They're just taking it in. And Jesus sees a large crowd approaching them. He sees it. And I would imagine that Jesus didn't get anxious. He didn't jump up and say, do you see all those people, people coming? No, no, no. Now the disciples on the other hand, they're probably thinking, their eyes are probably just getting wider and wider because just imagine 5,000 people approaching. That's a swarm of people. It's not just like a small group of people. It's a swarm of people coming, right? So Jesus turned. He turned and he asked Philip, where, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He just turned to Philip and asked him. He didn't jump up and say, hey, hey, Philip, check this out. Where can we buy bread to feed all these people that's coming? Where can we buy enough bread to feed all these people? No, 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 no. Jesus turned calmly to Philip and he asked him, where can we buy bread? To feed all these people. See, Jesus recognized the problem. He knew the problem. He knew the problem. Jesus recognized the problem. He knew the problem. He even knew how Philip was going to respond to the problem. He knew how Philip was going to respond to the problem. He knew what Philip's solution was going to be. However, he asked Philip for the resolution, for the solution to test Philip. To test Philip. See, Philip needed to recognize, need to realize his own need for growth. His growth in Jesus, his growth in God. See, sometimes God wants us to feel the problem to remind us of our dependence on God. Understand, let's think about it. If we have a problem free life, if we have a problem-free life, will we continue to depend on God? Will we continue to depend on God if we had a problem-free life? See, Jesus wanted Philip. He wanted Philip and he wanted the other disciples to fill the problem, to learn their dependence on God. And I would imagine that, that Philip looked over at that crowd, like I said, with extreme anxiety. With extreme anxiety. And then you got Jesus. You got Jesus right here asking you 
where to buy bread to feed all these people. See, I take it that what happened next was that Philip, what he did is he looked inwards. He looked inwards for a solution instead of upwards, right? Because he answered Jesus. He answered Jesus after he looked at the crowd. He answered Jesus with a solution. To The solution was to buy bread. Buy enough bread for them to only get a bite. For them to only get a bite. For them to only get a bite. But then, but then Andrew, Andrew. See, Andrew is Simon Peter's brother right? Andrew spoke up and he said, there's a boy, there's a boy right now with five small loaves of bread and two small fish. Jesus heard the solution. He heard, he heard what Andrew said. He heard Andrew's solution and he and Jesus proceeded to ask, well, how far will that go with 5,000 people to feed 5,000 people? Five small loaves of bread and two small fish. And Jesus had asked him, how far will that go to feed 5,000 people? He asked Andrew that. See, Andrew was focused on the vision. He was trying to focus his answer on the vision. He was trying to divide in his mind before he answered Jesus, right? See, dividing the food among 5,000 people, he was trying to figure out. That's what Andrew was doing. However, Jesus, Jesus doesn't favor division. He doesn't favor division. He favors multiplication, right? See, when we receive blessings, when we receive blessings in our lives, it's not divided. It's not divided into a third, a third, and a third. That, that's what my doctor told me one day about, about my heart. A third and a third and a third. So it's not divided a third and a third and a third. Our blessings, our blessings are always multiplied. It's always multiplied. See, it is said if we give, if we give, it will be given to us. A good amount will be poured into our laps. Poured into our laps. Pressed down. Shaken together. And running over. It is said that in the Bible. It is said that. A good amount will be poured into our laps. Pressed down. Shake it together and running over. The same amount you give will be measured out to you. That's what's said. And see, we need to remember for the same measure that we use in obedience and dependency, it will be measured back to us. So Jesus asked how they were going to feed all these people with that amount of food. And Matthew Matthew gives a, he gives a different, a different scenario. See, he gives a different scenario for, for the conversation with Jesus. He gives a different perspective for the conversation with Jesus. And according to Matthew, the disciples told Jesus that they were in a desert, deserted place, deserted place, and it was getting late. And that they should send, they should send everyone home to go buy food on their own in the village. That was Matthew's solution. That was his perspective of the solution, right? But see, understand, no one listened to the question. No one listened to the actual question. The question was about feeding the people. The question was about the people, about how we were going to feed the people. Not about sending them away. That wasn't the question. See, this is similar to us. This is similar to us. When we are sitting in the belly of the whale, 
When we are sitting in the belly of the well, in a dark place in our circumstances, just wallowing in a dark place of our circumstances, God comes to us and he asks us, what are you doing here? And see, and this is what we tell them, because we're sitting in a dark place. We're sitting in the belly of the well of our circumstances. And this is what we tell God, this is what we answer him. This is a desert, deserted place. This is a deserted place and it's getting dark and I'm not happy where I am in my life right now. That's when we answer God. That's why, this is when we answer God that, right? But see, if we listen more clearly, if we listen more clearly, God isn't asking, why are we here? He's not asking, why are you in this deserted place? Why are you sitting in the belly of the pit of the well? He's asking us, what are you doing here? So Jesus, let's go back to the story. Jesus, Jesus instructed, he instructed the disciples to sit the groups down in a group of 50 each, right? And then Jesus took, he took the five loaves of bread and the two small fish and he looked up to heaven to bless the food. And he then he thanked God. And then next, he multiplied the food. He multiplied the food by breaking the food into pieces. See, this is when Jesus performed his miracle. And you notice, before he performed his miracle, what did he do? He gave thanks to God. He blessed the food and then gave thanks to God and then he performed his miracle. See, sometimes we are so focused on not receiving our miraculous blessings that we don't even realize that we are still holding our five small loaves of bread and our two small fish. We're just holding it, trying to figure out a solution to our problems on our own instead of just giving it to God. Because see, we need to put the little that we do have into God's hands. Sometimes you have to risk it all over to him so that he can bless it and increase it, correct? So Jesus proceeded to fill 12 baskets and he gave it to his disciples to distribute among the 5,000 people. And see, as the disciples went through the crowd, through the groups of 50 people each, as disciples went through with the baskets, each time they broke the food off, a piece of the food off, and gave it away, further multiplication happened. Further multiplication happened. The baskets were continuously replenished every single time the disciples took a piece out and gave it to the people. Because see, the disciples took a step of faith. They took a step of faith and they each and every single time they were pulling a piece off of faith and they were giving it away. Sometimes to receive a miracle in our lives, sometimes to receive a miracle in our lives, we need to participate in the miracle. We need to participate in the actual miracle. See, Jesus involved the disciples in their own miracle. And all it required, all it required was faith on their part. Was faith in the, on their part. That's all it required. See, miracles don't happen by magic. Oh no, it don't happen by magic. It don't happen by magic. See, because God's not in the magic business. He's not a magician, right? Miracles happen through our faith. It has been said that what? Faith moves what? Faith moves mountains. Faith moves mountains. See, we have to step out and do what God tells us to do to realize that we are part of the miracle. 
And during this process, understand during this process, God is developing. He's developing our faith. He's developing our faith. And the more we use our faith in obedience, our faith strengthens and strengthens. And see, this is when we are prepared. We are prepared to further serve God. Can I get an amen on that? So the 5,000 people, the 5,000 people ate and they were full. They were full. And see when the disciples, when it was all over, when the disciples gathered up all of the leftovers, there were 12 baskets full of leftovers. Can I remind you that this was all off of five small loaves of bread and two small fish. See, understand God, God does not barely meet our needs. He doesn't barely meet our needs and give us some of his provisions. He supplies us abundantly, abundantly, abundantly. See, similar to the meal delivery service kits, he not only delivers provisions in our lives, not just in our lives, but he also provides for anyone who touches it and he provides it abundantly, abundantly. There was a story of a lady named Ruth. Not, not Ruth in the Bible, let's not be confused. It was just a lady named Ruth. So there was a story of a lady named Ruth. And one day, Ruth went to her, her mailbox to find only one letter. She picked it up and she looked at it before opening, but then she looked at the envelope again because it was kind of odd because the envelope didn't have a stamp or a postmark. It only had her name and address. So she opened up the letter and she read the letter and the letter said, Dear Ruth, I'm going to be in your neighborhood on Saturday afternoon and I would like to visit. Love always, God. And her hands, her hands began to shake as she placed the letter on the table in her kitchen. And she said, why would God, why would God want to visit me? I'm nobody special. I don't have anything to offer. And just then Ruth remembered her empty kitchen cabinets. And she said to herself, oh, oh my goodness. I really don't have anything to offer. I'll have to run down to the store and buy something for dinner. Just then she reached for her purse and she counted $5.40. And then she said, well, I can get some bread and some cold cuts at least with that amount. So with the plan in action, in mind, in action, she went into action and she threw on her coat and hurried out the door. Ruth went to the store and she brought a loaf of French bread, a pound of sliced turkey, and a carton of milk. And this left Ruth with 12 cents to last her until Monday. But nevertheless, she felt good as she headed home. And as she was walking, someone said, excuse me ma'am, can you help us? Ruth had been so observed absorbed she had been so absorbed in her dinner plans she hadn't even noticed two figures huddled in the alleyway as she passed the alleyway and it was a man and a woman both of them dressed in a little more than rags and the man began to explain to Ruth as Ruth turned around that he didn't have a job and that they were homeless and that the weather was getting cold and they were very hungry and he finished it up with saying if you could help us we would really appreciate it. And Ruth looked at them both in a judgmental way and she told the man that she would like to help, but she was a poor woman as well with only just a few cold cuts and some bread and she had a very important dinner guest coming. The man then put his arm around his wife's shoulder and he thanked Ruth nevertheless and he turned around and they headed back down the alleyway. And as Ruth watched them leave, Ruth felt the familiar tug in her heart. And just then Ruth yelled out for them to, to wait. And she ran to them and she told them, look, look, 
why don't you take this food? I'll figure out something, something else to serve my guests. And she handed the man her bag of groceries. The man took the bag and said, thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. And then she heard a smaller voice and it said, yes, thank you. And when Ruth turned around to see where the voice came from, the small voice came from, it was the man's wife. And Ruth could see that she was shivering. Ruth then said, you know, I've got another coat at home. Here, why don't you take this one? And Ruth began to unbutton her jacket. And when she unbuttoned it, she slipped it over the woman's shoulders. Ruth smiled to herself and she turned around and she walked away to the street, right? Without her coat and nothing to serve her important dinner guests. By the time Ruth reached home, she was chilled and she was worried. She was chilled and worried because see, God was coming to visit and she didn't have anything to offer him. And as she was fumbling through her purse at the door, she realized that there was another envelope in her mailbox. And she thought to herself, that's odd. The mailman doesn't usually come twice in one day. And she took the mailbox, she took the envelope out the, the box, the mailbox, and she opened it. And she read the letter and the letter said, Dear Ruth, it was good to see you again. Thank you for the lovely meal. And thank you too for the beautiful coat. Love God. Love always God. See, similar to the disciples, distributing the 12 baskets of food, Jesus involved Ruth in a miracle and it required faith on her part. Again, to receive a miracle in our lives, we need to participate in the miracle. Miracles happen by what? It happens by our faith. It happens through our faith. We need to step out and do what God tells us to do and realize that we are part of the miracle because see, during this process, God is developing our faith. And the more we use our faith in obedience, our faith strengthens. And this is when we are prepared for service, for further service to God. Our action items are first and foremost, give praise. Then we need to understand our dependence on God. God does not barely meet our needs. Remember, God does not barely meet our needs. He supplies us abundantly. His provisions are abundant, right? Remember, our blessings are always multiplied. They're always multiplied. A good amount of blessings will be poured into our laps. It will be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We will receive an overflow. Correct? The same amount we give will be measured out to us. Never underestimate. I need for you guys to remember, never underestimate God's interest in our well-being. He knows exactly what we are facing right now. Right now, at this moment in our lives. He knows exactly what, our, what we're facing. He knows what our needs are. And He has every intention of supplying for those needs. God has a solution already to every single problem in our lives and we will receive that miraculous blessing. Understand, miracles always begin with problems. My quote. My quote for the week is from Hudson Taylor. And the quote reads, God's work, God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. Fun spiritual fact. The word provision. The word provision appears 26 times in the NIV Bible. Thank you for listening today. I look forward to the next time. And remember, you will receive God's absolute blessings this week because you have God's unconditional love. Amen. Yes. And I ask you to to take a moment to visit AFG Ministries website and visit our prayer room. The power of prayer is so intense and we would love to pray over you. For my closing prayer, I would like to read Numbers 
chapter 6, verses 24 through 26 as my closing prayer. Many blessings. Thank you again. I appreciate you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you peace in his name. Amen.